Hey, it's Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. I am a master licensed diabetes educator, a certified diabetes care and education specialist, and IFM certified in functional medicine. And I specialize in helping people to reverse insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic dysfunction by addressing the underlying root causes of those conditions. Sleep is one of the most important factors for good blood sugar control. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to reprogram your circadian rhythms to ensure good quality sleep. Before I get into the content, I just want to remind you, if you enjoy these videos, please put a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to the channel, and then click the bell for notifications so you get notified as soon as I release a new video just like this one. Also, if you want to learn more about how to improve sleep quality, I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to my sleep mini course. It's a very affordable, short and powerful mini course on how to totally transform your sleep, get good quality sleep and rest, so you can lower stress hormone levels, cortisol levels, improve sleep quality, and improve blood sugar and metabolic health. So again, I'll put a link below the video to my sleep mini course if you really want a deep dive into improving your sleep quality. So let's talk about circadian rhythms and the circadian rhythm of your sleep and wake cycle. The circadian rhythm of sleep is that natural internal clock that drives the natural sleep-wake cycle. So in other words, it tells you when to wake up and it tells you when it's time to go to sleep. And that's largely by releasing certain hormones. There's a natural clock that's a 24-hour clock. It's called our circadian rhythm. And within that period, certain hormones fluctuate at various times of the day. And those give our body and our brain signals to wake up, prepare for bed, and go to sleep. And of course, to stay asleep, which is really important. This is largely controlled by the hypothalamus in the brain. In fact, a tiny region of the brain called the SCN, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. It gets signals directly from your eyes, from the photoreceptors in your eyes, which drives this rhythm. Our circadian rhythms not only drive and impact our sleep, but like I mentioned, they'll influence hormone production and fluctuations, body temperature, metabolic health, insulin sensitivity, and blood sugar regulation, and cognitive performance. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to optimize and retrain that circadian rhythm because a lot of times it gets off from bad habits like staying up too late or sleeping in, sitting and watching TV too late, or sitting up on our computers with that blue or white light blasting into our eyes, or having all the lights on in the house. Not getting enough sunlight early in the day can affect it also. So there's a variety of factors. Stress plays a role. Sleep disturbances play a role. But these things can interfere with that natural circadian rhythm, and it can throw off our hormones, metabolic health, blood sugar and insulin sensitivity, and brain function. Let's talk a little bit more more about the circadian rhythms of sleep and then how we can retrain those to improve sleep quality and improve metabolic health. There are several hormones involved in the regulation of our sleep-wake cycle. The most prominent, the one I'm sure you've heard of, and the one we think of as the sleep hormone is melatonin. Melatonin is produced and released by a small gland up in our skull called the pineal gland, largely in response to darkness. So as it gets dark, our pineal gland releases more and more melatonin, and that causes our brain to get tired, our body to get tired. So the SCN gets so signals from the eyes that it's dark. It sends a signal to the pineal gland. The pineal gland releases melatonin, and then melatonin binds to certain receptors in the brain, which make us tired and make us want to go to sleep. Another important sleep hormone or a hormone related to sleep is cortisol. Cortisol, often called stress hormone, is released by the adrenal glands and cortisol production peaks first thing in the morning, which makes us feel alert and awake and then drops throughout the day. So as the day goes on and it gets darker and we get ready for bed, cortisol drops to very low levels. So cortisol and melatonin have opposing effects 
on our sleep-wake cycle. And unfortunately, cortisol seems to be the more powerful hormone. Cortisol can block the effects of melatonin, keeping us stimulated and awake. And if we're releasing too much cortisol in the evening in response to watching TV or working on the computer or being stressed, then we don't get the effects of melatonin and the brain stays activated. Another interesting hormone related to sleepiness and wakefulness is called adenosine. Adenosine is part of ATP or adenosine triphosphate and adenosine levels accumulate over the course of the day as we burn energy. As those levels accumulate, it puts sleep pressure on the brain which makes us feel tired and increases that sleepiness. As we sleep over the course of the night, adenosine levels actually start to go down, it gets taken back up, and when adenosine levels get low enough, we actually start to become more awake or alert in the morning. Interestingly, caffeine actually binds to adenosine receptors and prevents adenosine from acting on the adenosine receptor or the brain. And that's how caffeine stimulates the central nervous system. It inhibits the effects of adenosine. So it inhibits the sleep promoting effects. So what happens is you get a big buildup of adenosine, but it can't act on the brain when caffeine's present. That keeps you feeling awake and alert, but also keeps your adenosine levels really high. So when the caffeine wears off, boom, you get very tired. So how do we wind up with dysregulated sleep circadian rhythms? I mentioned it earlier, but some of the main ways are staying up too late or sleeping in the morning. For some people, this is related to shift work or working long hours or working overnight. And for others, it's just habits that form. Another thing that can disrupt circadian rhythms is drinking caffeine too late in the day, which again affects the adenosine receptors and keeps us too stimulated too late. Another thing people do is work on their computer too late or watch scary movies late at night or get involved in deep conversations too late at night. Anything to stimulate the brain or to drive a stress response and elevate cortisol and then that becomes a pattern it gets habituated and that starts to affect those circadian rhythms over time so here's seven ways that you can retrain your circadian rhythms around sleep number one is setting and maintaining a consistent sleep cycle, a consistent wake time and a consistent sleep time. In other words, wake up and go to bed around the same time every day. This consistency will reinforce the sleep-wake cycle and it'll teach your brain when it's time to go to bed and when it's time to wake up. You can also create some routines around waking up and going to sleep so that your brain gets entrained to your wake and sleep cycle. Number two is to optimize your sleep environment. You wanna make sure you have a really comfortable environment that is conducive to falling asleep quickly and staying asleep over the course of the evening. Make sure your room is dark, it's cool, somewhere between 65 and 68 degrees. You want your room to be quiet as well and free of distractions as possible. Also, we wanna eliminate blue or white light. So it's important to keep your room not only dark, but if you do have any lights in there, they should be more red or orange. You can use earplugs or an eye mask or a white noise machine or other tools like that to help produce a healthy sleep environment in your room. Number three, we want to practice good sleep hygiene. I mentioned it earlier, but one way to do this is to have a really good structured bedtime routine. Make sure you're avoiding stimulating activities, rigorous exercise, electronic devices, scary movies or books, difficult conversations, and use this time instead to create a calming ritual or routine that helps your brain start to get tired and prepared to go to sleep. Number four is to manage your light exposure. Exposure to natural light during the day, especially early in the morning when you first wake up, can help to program your circadian rhythms for you to be able to fall asleep easily in the evening. So when you first wake up in the morning, it's a good idea to go outside or go on your porch and look up at the sun, get some natural direct light exposure. Or if it's dark in the morning, you can use a full spectrum light 
light to do the same sort of thing in your home. And then at the other end of the sleep-wake cycle, again, I've mentioned this before, but you want to avoid bright lights. You want to avoid blue light or white light after the sun goes down and use either candlelight or soft yellow, orange, or red lights. Next is to avoid or reduce stimulants and alcohol. Caffeine, nicotine, or other stimulants in the afternoon or evening can certainly affect your ability to fall asleep easily, and that will interfere with your circadian rhythms. And alcohol, even though it can make you feel drowsy and may help you fall asleep, research shows that it actually disrupts sleep overnight, leads to poor quality sleep, and interferes with deep sleep, so it's best to avoid alcohol intake, especially close to bedtime. Number six is get regular exercise during the day. Research shows that engaging in regular cardiovascular exercise and strength training during the day enhances sleep quality at night. Just be careful not to get vigorous stimulating exercise too late into the day because that could stimulate adrenaline and cortisol levels, which will block melatonin and interfere with your ability to fall asleep. So for any type of high intensity intensity exercise, we usually recommend finishing that by say four or five o'clock before dinner. And if you're going to exercise in the evening, maybe just do a gentle walk or some form of light cardio or gentle yoga, tai chi, or some type of restorative exercise. And the last tip for retraining circadian rhythms is to use a gradual time adjustment. Don't try to shift your sleep-wake times by hours at a time. Take it slow and make gradual changes over time. If you're used to going to sleep at midnight or one o'clock in the morning, try going to sleep at 11.30. If you're used to waking up at 10 o'clock in the morning, try waking up at 9.30. Do that for a week or two and then try another 15 to 30 minute adjustment. And by the way, I usually recommend starting with your wake-up time. So if you're if you find that you're sleeping in too much, set your wake up time at the same time every day. Adjust it by 30 minutes or so if you need to, and then start to work on your sleep times. Retraining your circadian rhythms is not easy. It can take time, so be patient with yourself. Make slow, gradual adjustments, and remember this is very important for metabolic health, insulin sensitivity, weight loss and fat loss, blood pressure, cardiovascular health, dementia or Alzheimer's disease and cognitive function, and many other aspects of of health. Sleep quality is really important. So take the time and put the effort in to retraining your circadian rhythms to enhance your sleep quality and enhance your blood sugar and metabolic health. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. I'm Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. Remember, if you want to learn more about how to fix your sleep, look in the description of this video below. There's a link there for my full mini course all about sleep. Just click that link. It'll take you to a page where it'll tell you all about the mini course. It's super inexpensive and really helpful if you want a deep dive into correcting imbalances in sleep quality. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you back on my next video.